I'm the man Brian Hewitt. I need to end the man. Yours truly. Coming to you from the MCM Ministries Bible LA. Again, talking about your victory. The sweet smell of victory for being a winner in the name of Jesus. And we are bringing these broadcasts to the unchurched from here in Los Angeles. And we invited you to travel with us and to our crusades in Kenya, Nigeria, Tanzania, Pakistan. Praying for the whole world to come into one accord of peace. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Praying for the peace of Israel. Those that do shall prosper. We're going into England twice. We're going to our, our work continues in Canada. And of course here in Los Angeles, California. We lift up all prayer and we invite you to come and visit us at bryanthewitt.com. That's at bryanthewitt.com. Brothers and sisters, a brief expression of prayer for those who just joined us. God is the living truth of your reflection. If you have to explain what you feel God is calling to you, then it's not from God. If you only look at yourself in the reflection of every mirror, then you're not even close to God. The next time you come to that mirror and see a reflection, it is the reflection of Christ. It is, it is that testimony that you can share with Anita and the man that you went before the cross of Calvary at your redemption when you were redeemed. And Christ with his open arms came off the cross and hugged you and embraced you and anointed you, anointed you with the blood of Calvary and got you going with his calling and placed you where he wants to, where you want to be placed, not where you want to be placed and remove this. Prayer gives us that decision. It determines our destiny. It brings us to the revelation of the truth of one mind and one judgment of Christ. It brings us to an empowerment. And in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, which is our one of our foundation scriptures, but we're going to be spending some time in the book of Ruth. Be strong, take courage. Don't Intimidate! Don't be intimidated. Don't give the sec. Don't give the a second thought because God, your God, is striding ahead of you. He's right there with you. He won't let you down. He won't leave you. That's again from Deuteronomy chapter thirty-one, verse six. We have used the Bible. Some of us use it as something to stand on. Some of us use it actually to change our lives with. But the sweet smell of victory of our topic comes with the good news of the Lord. The victory is already yours before the fight has ever been fought. And we're fighting the fight of good faith. We're moving into the reality that God wants us to understand. Wisdom that we have been speaking of. Wisdom is the jeweler that brings you to the river of your your baptismal, your that guides you to the beginning steps of your eternity gives you the three giftings of royalty upon your baptism of hope faith and love jesus christ then guides you to the to a doorway opens a door of faith and walks you into your new house called the home of salvation the house of salvation and not only is jesus doing this for you jesus is guiding you to an ever blessed victory ever ever so much we have here tonight the expression of God's love, an everlasting time to be alive in Christ, to, to have God make us into a habitation of His glory, claiming us to have the faith, moving us into the, into the earnestness of Christ our Lord. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the Savior. That means the perfume. That's from Ruth chapter 2 verse 14. Of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor. A sweet smell. We are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved. In them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Second Corinthians chapter 2, 14 through 16. God's plan for you is victory. Perpetual victory, always 
and in every place. Now, it doesn't mean that you and I have to run for the re-election or election to be the president of the United States or what Bubba Clinton is, the president of the world. We don't, but we do have to move in the world. We have to present, have gone command our thoughts, our life, so we can present his works before the throne of God. We have that victory, but we still have to do that work. What my wife has finally learned about me eight months into our marriage is I'm very patient. But if you tell me you've been sitting in the same church pew for 35 years and that's just all the work you've been doing, I will walk away from you. My wife doesn't like that. She does rebuke me when we get home. But what you get, that's not works, okay? That's not works. Let's put it on a Sunday showcase face. We have to go beyond just taking up a church space in the pews. We have to go forward and the name of Jesus Christ to be a witness because at one time someone witnessed to us right and with me now we are a witness to others we are bringing them to the Lord and the bus stops going home from work walking out of the elevator from your office at work with me so far the grocery store lines are the best church forever next to buses subways everything everything my wife talks her head off at the market. She saves about a half a dozen people every time I go to the store. We need your help. God needs your help. What we want you to be a part of this ministry. We want you to really be alive with the growth that God is bringing to this world. And God, God has everything in order for you but we must lift up that prayer we must understand the true diligence the strength the, lift, the offering of obedience and as we get into the practice of offerings of obedience God yields to us it's time to put up a financial offering it's time to make a commitment and to thank God for blessing us so the windows of heaven once you do that financial commitment will open up and, a st and your own storehouses of your own apartments, your homes, your ranches will not be able to handle these. First John chapter 5, verse 14. This is a confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He, He what, brethren? He hears us. He hears us. In. Nobody can have victory always and in every place. Well, I guess Paul just made a mistake. No. If you're having, if you're not having victory, it's not because Paul made a mistake. It's because you are, you are not appropriating the victory that is yours in the Lord Jesus Christ. And how my soul burns today to lay that upon your heart. To lay this upon your heart. The Bible admits the possibility of defeat for the child of God, but never the necessity of it. Did they sink? Did, did, did that sink in? The Bible admits the possibility of defeat for the child of God, but never the necessity of it. So if you don't pray, let's put it this way. You have not because you ask not. You make a lot of complaints to me, make a lot of complaints oh I tried that prayer thing for a day Wow God bless you how you endure it <laughs> come on I think we should all take a lesson into father Abraham how long he had to wait for the promises of God 25 years now thanks unto God which causes us always to triumph in Christ Jesus 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 Look at the word triumph. Let me tell you about the word triumph. If you were to go to Rome, to go to the Roman form there, you would see our called the Ark of Triumph. And that's what Paul is writing about, the same thing that the Ark was built for. Your Ark of Triumph. We are triumphant 
by taking our mantle of leadership and having it ordained and blessed upon the blood of blood blood of Calvary. We go into the watchfulness and the readiness that Christ guides us with and blesses us with and brings us to the newness of the mind and heart. God brings us to that manifestation of His glory, but what comes before the manifestation is the vision. What comes before the vision is understanding faith, hope, and the child from hope and faith is love. And we get into, into the nutritional word of God. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Faithful and true is his name. We're going to be riding horseback behind him. Horseback behind him with millions and billions of people that lived centuries before us. Don't spoil your own harvest. Don't live with un uncovered. Don't live with uncovered sin. Let it go. Open the doors. I'd rather see some ministers throughout the world, not just from where I am, just really cut loose. Hey, I, I got my hand caught in a cookie jar and I borrowed a million dollars from the offering. I'm going to return it back. 700 fold okay trust me we have to be understanding that we can't fool God we can fool the ways of man because the ways of men have always tried to fool us uh, we have that unction to get back to the ways of man because they've they've tried to put the screws to us and it's the decision of that sweet smell of victory that sweet smell of the perfume of Christ that brings us to the understanding that God wants all of us to have a uniqueness. We all love a love story, but this is a love story, but it is a unique story of the book of Ruth. That's your homework assignment. It's one of two books of the Bible that bear the names of women, the book of Ruth and the book of Esther. But the book is unique because it is devoted primarily to to a woman whose name was Ruth. As we're going as we're going to see, Ruth is a picture in the Old Testament of the church, and she marries a man named Boaz, who was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, our kinsman, redeemer. Now we won't get to that this morning, but this day, by her, by her it's there. And it's some of the, of the most important, beautiful teaching in the Bible about the redemption we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is so much to learn about this story. Ruth was a pagan. She was, spiritually, she was from the wrong side of the track. And she comes to Israel, to Bethlehem, and she meets Boaz. Very rich, very strong, very kind, very good. And Boaz, as we're going to see, was a bachelor and so... It's a Cinderella story. The maid from the, the hood meets a bachelor from Beth, Bethlehem and they get married. It's a love story, a wonderful story, an intriguing story with plots and subplots. God is bringing you to your own plot, to your own destiny, and we get into the basics. We must be redeemed. If you don't know the Lord, this is your time to know the Lord. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's all pray for this together. Dear God, I admit, I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place to pay the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to fill me and take control and to help me become the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Lord. I am redeemed. That's Anita. 
singing in your name. The angels in heaven are singing in your name. I am praising your name. You've got the sweet smelling victory. You are redeemed. Focus on your reality of your redemption with God now. Then now of faith.